Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Namaste Experience at no other place but here, right now. Call it Namaste Village, call it whatever you want. Or call it nothing. And that might even be better. Don't call it anything. Just receive whatever fruit is being offered and it's very ripe. Do you feel how ripe and how, how juicy this fruit is? And we, we're so blessed. We, we get to come here every single, well, five days a week, more and Sunday, I guess, for the Unity Service. We get to come here and enjoy the fruit, and we share it, and we, ah, we are so blessed. So thank you for being here. And one thing I was thinking about right before this session is that when a, a pile of twigs is sufficiently dry, all it takes is a single spark for it to ignite and begin to roar. A single spark. But that wood has to be dry, doesn't it? We have to be ready. And from the very beginning, the most simple lesson we have been taught is simply this. You are ready. Receive that. Accept that. There's no need to get ready to be ready. Which is where the mind wants to go, where the ego how the ego wants to defend itself from being ready right now. To be ready simply means that you've gone through everything else that you need to go through. If you want to believe in past lives, that's great. You've gone through many past lives, many experiences, whatever. And you've come to the point where you realize you're never going to find what you want out there only here. That's what it means to be ready. And you wouldn't be sitting here, you wouldn't be watching this, if you were not ready right now. And so the drying process of our own pile of twigs is that recognition. I'm ready for this. I don't need to do anything. I don't need to figure anything out. There's nothing out there that needs to get fixed. No one out there that I need to change. I'm ready right now. And one of the ways that we will know just how ready we are is when we, we hear or receive just a snippet of reality and it sets my entire being on fire. All we need is that little spark. It could be something we read. It could be something we hear. It could be something that someone else says to us that they don't even realize they've said. I, I have found, and maybe you have as well, that this is so often how the Holy Spirit does use us to help guide someone. You probably won't even know it's happening. My advice is that if someone does come up to you and say, the Holy Spirit's telling me to tell you, run. <laughs> That's not how it works. But the Holy Spirit will likely use you or others in a way that they don't even know. They'll say something that may seem very strange or innocuous or even in context but it will strike you, it will hit you in a certain way that, that lights you on fire because you're ready. The wood of your fire is dry, so all it takes is a single spark. So the reason I'm saying that is right before session started, I, I was going to just go review uh, the, uh, the, the little section that I wrote for uh, the mystical truth of the day. And something else started to happen. I, I actually decided right before that to go and to listen to a recording by a particular teacher who we are going to explore next week. I won't tell you who yet, but we're going to explore someone next week. And so I, I, I just turned on a quick recording of that person, and all it took was five seconds. I turned it off. 
because all it took was five seconds and I was on fire. Sorry, I keep hitting the table. Maybe that's kind of like the, the, the fire is beginning to reverberate. That's all it took was five seconds and it was like this rush of energy and light and heat began to move through me. And I know that you know what I mean because we've all experienced this in, in one way or another. Whether you were conscious of the experience or not, you might want to become conscious of it because if you are, it will begin to happen more and more. Once again, because you are ready. So what I did and what I usually do is that that fire, that heat will, uh, will translate in a different way for each one of us. For me, especially right before this session, it comes through as a, a reminder. First for me, because I'm very, I, I know that I'm only here to teach myself, as is the case with each one of us. But immediately that light, that heat will be translated in some form that I can quickly write down. So this is, this is the, the spark. This is the fire that, that came from just that five seconds that I heard. You are the creator and maintainer of the world you think you see. The creator and the maintainer of the world that you think you see. Change the lens through which you view the world, and the world changes. Shift your focus from attacking to blessing, and the world will shift to reflect that choice. Is it possible that you really possess such power? Is it easy to believe that the world is simply a reflection of your thoughts about the world? A reflection of your thoughts about the world. Learn this one lesson and learn it well, and then everything else will fall naturally into place. Learn that the world you perceive is really just your reception or rejection of all of your thoughts about the world. God has given you dominion over your own mind, and everything that extends from your mind into the world you believe is real. You have used this power to deny who you are. Until now, you have used that power, the power given to you by God, to deny who you are. But now, you're learning to use it to affirm your reality, a reality that is supported by God rather than the world God could never possibly know. Mm. The power that is supported by God rather than the world that God could never possibly know. That's, that's what happens when you realize that you're ready to be ready, which is the same as what we've been saying all week long, to know what you know. It's one thing to believe something, but when you know something and you know that you know that, there's no need to prove it. There's, you don't have to convince anyone of anything. You can rest in that knowing. You can rest in God. And what is there left to do anyway? I can't think of anything, can you? Pickleball. Pickleball, that would be one thing. Mm -hmm. So rest in God and pickleball, okay. <laughs> yes. You know, play pickleball, play, play dominoes like Vicky likes to do, or play whatever you want to play, but it's all play. The real work is just to hold still and to realize that I'm ready to be set on fire. There's nothing else I need to do. There's nothing else I think needs to be accomplished. I can just rest in that. So that being said, now I'll share the thing that I wrote before that I had intended to share this morning. <laughs> now that you've been sufficiently heated, <laughs> now that the fire has been stoked inside your soul, hear this. You cannot intellectually know how you know something since the how of what you know is inconsequential and meaningless. 
the how of how you got here is meaningless. That's interesting. The how of how you got here means nothing. Hmm. Let's go further. There is no how within reality. Since reality does not change. The truth does not change. It is forever true. Reality is forever real. It simply is what it is, forever and without change. I may say that I know how I arrived at a given place based on my memory of traveling to that place, but the so-called place where the soul rests is in every place. Ooh, the so-called place where the soul rests is in every place. And that's everywhere at once. So there's no how. How did I get to every place? How can you get to every place? You're simply in every place. The how dissolves. Maybe, maybe that's what's happening to your mind. The how, how I got this, how I learned this, how I received whatever it has disappeared, has dissolved. You don't need to figure it out. Uh, another word that you don't need to figure out is why. How and why are very related. <laughs> Why ask why? There's no need. Just simply rest in the place where you find yourself whole and complete and supported by reality itself. I'm going to back up a little bit. I may say that I know how I arrived at a given place based on a memory of traveling to that place, but the so-called place where the soul rests is in every place that is everywhere at once. This is the same as saying that you never really left heaven. You never really left heaven. Except in your imagination, and you have a very good imagination, since heaven is the unchanging and unchangeable presence of love, or God. The unchanging and unchangeable presence of love. So we keep coming back to the simple experience that there's only one reality that is active and present in your life and in the world, and that is the reality of love. And you could say God, and you could say whatever you want to say, but that is what it is. And that's what it will always be. If we just relax into the isness that is. How simple is salvation? I need do nothing, just rest in what is. Like St. Francis says, God is, and that's enough for me. Mm -hmm. I don't need anything more. Just that experience, not the belief, but the experience. So Vicki, I'm gonna turn it over to you now, if you're out there. Do we have I'm you? I'm right here. There running. you are, good morning to you, dear. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, and I Hi. love both your little um, readings. And, and you know, it you reminded, know, reminded me. me. Whoops, I've got the F. We are the saviors of our world precisely because the lens we're looking at it through is what we do have a choice over. We can see a chaotic world that we're a victim of or we can see a purity of wholeness and oneness that we are part of. And what you were saying about the questions, the how and the why, as soon as we have a questioning mind, you can bet we're in an ego state. It just, it's the natural expression of an ego state. <clears throat> when we drop into letting go of the question, and that resting into that openness of what is, then we fall into a letting of that current of grace come in and inform us and direct us and take us and fulfill us. <coughs> Excuse me. But the first thing that really came to my mind that's very practical, you know, when you say we're ready, well, what hell are we ready? We're ready when we recognize our purity and everyone else's purity. As soon as we see an exception to that, anyone, anything, an exception to that, 
we have fallen again into that idea that we're separate from God. That's all. When we see purity as everything, regardless of what it seems to be saying or doing, and we're recognizing the connectedness, the wholeness, the innate without oppositeness of that which we belong to, we see innocence and we see cause for nothing but blessing. So that's a lens that I I especially used yesterday with something that came up. I saw some place where I felt really guilty for something. And in order to move back into feeling free, I had to welcome, welcome, welcome it in, take a look at it and recognize, oh my gosh, I'm believing in guilt in myself and in my brother. I have to shake that out. That can't be. Life is innocence and wholeness and love, natural purity. And the holding on or the not recognizing when we're holding on to some place that has guilt in it, that has exception to love in it, is the only choice we have to free that up, free that misperception up and return again to simple love, simple purity, that everything belongs to love. And in love, everything is, is in its natural innocence. And am I ready to call everything pure, everything holy, everything blessed? Am I ready? Is that the lens I'm going to look out at myself and all of the world around me? That's how we become the saviors of our world. When we choose to look upon our purity and everyone else's purity, the world we thought we see, the tilt, that lens that was all scattered, get some natural by grace re readjustment into the natural wholeness, the natural love, the natural light that it is. So am I ready to see everyone innocent and pure and myself in that? That's a good lens for me. So that's what I would share this morning, Brother James. Let's see what Calico is. Yeah, well, before we get to Calico, I'm, I'm going to give Calico uh, a jumping off point because there was something that, that you said, Vicki, that sparked this one sentence. And I think this is the, the, the ex, this one sentence expresses the experience of a whole or enlightened mind. So you ready, Calico? Here it is. There is no exception in the mind of God. Yeah. yeah. No exception in the mind of God. Take it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, there is there feedback. Is feedback. I, I don't know. <laughs> there we go. Um, you know, God has nothing to do with the world. And this is that, you know, both of you kind of related to this. It's to go within. This is not about, you know, again, trying to shift the deck chairs. This is about a much deeper experience of going within. And, you know, it's all about forgiveness. I mean, that's really all it is. And what you thought your brother did to you, you have done to yourself. So if you can start catching those thoughts where you feel guilty, and it's kind of like, what am I feeling guilty for? Usually I'm feeling guilty because I thought my brother did something to me. And it's kind of like, and I've got to correct that weird thing because God just loves. You know, and I, I don't know how many times I've said this to myself because it's like, yeah, but God, did you see what they did? And it's like, no, God just loves you know really you know tattoo that on the inside of your eyelids so that you can remind yourself on a regular basis because that's all this is and since i am god and you know really um at some point i'd love to have a whole session on quantum because what is required is for us to go quantum and not you know, use our previous knowledge, which is based on New Newtonian physics. It's our, it, it, it's really much 
it goes with what you said originally, James. It's kind of like we have this power in us to create whatever it is that we see. And it's it's not in changing the deck chairs. It's in changing my mind about what a deck chair means and why do deck chairs need to be in a certain spot and not in another spot. That's all horizontal. But this vertical is God. And God is an experience. That's it. God is just an experience. God isn't a guy. God isn't a girl. God isn't to them. God is an experience. And I know when I'm in that experience, and it is heaven. It's just heaven. I'm not making myself wrong. I'm not making another wrong. And it's like, and that's all based on forgiveness. And that's all God wants for us is to be happy. You know, I ask myself every morning when my eyes open up, am I happy? Because it's my gold standard. If I'm happy, great. You can now get out of bed and go pee. You know, but if I'm not happy, then I've got some deep work to do. And, and look at why in the world am I not experiencing happy? You know, and it's usually because I have a thought that my brother did something to me and I need to pull it back. And as soon as I can pull it back, that's the miracle. The miracle, it changes, it shifts, and you get back into this God experience. And it's everything. It's like, and I, that's why it's so important to, and Lisa Natoli, I can still hear her voice, and this is from probably a decade ago, watch your thoughts like a hawk. You know, I mean, if you're not watching your thoughts, you're missing it all together. And it's kind of like, because what you think is the power that you're creating with. So if I wake up, oh, I'm feeling tired and sick and miserable. Guess what I'm going to create for the day? Fatigue, sickness, and miserable. And so it's kind of like really just constantly coming back to my mind to, for my correction. And it's And that's all it is. That's really all it is. And if you're looping with a particular thought, it just means there's a bigger belief that you've attached to whatever is going on. And it's, you know, and then it, you need, to, like, you know, Vicki says, take to your bed. It's time to take to your bed, man. You've got a big belief that's resulting in us making something wrong that has got to surface. And we have to be willing to allow it to surface. Because without that allowance, we're dead in the water. And all I can say is I know everyone on this Zoom loves God. I don't know anything else about you, but I know you love God because you wouldn't be here if you didn't. And so it's kind of like, okay, well then love God enough to change your mind. See what you're thinking and change your mind. So thank you so much. This has been a great, great morning. morning. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you so much, Calico. Thank you so much, Vicki. Thank you, to all of you. And just to kind of put a nice little bow on that as a reminder, God's will for you is perfect happiness. Perfect happiness, not relative happiness. I'm happy relative to being unhappy. I'm happy relative to whatever the opposite experience may be. No, perfect happiness is exactly that. It's a joy that transcends this world. It's beyond any thought, any imagination that I might have of what it means to be joyful, filled with joy, to the point that that's all there is. That's what God's will for you is. And God's will for you is to love because that's what God is and that's what you are. Once again, how simple is salvation? And whenever we feel ourselves getting pulled away from that, some ideas, some concepts, some attack thought, whatever it may be, just come back to that. God's will for me is perfect happiness. And if I can just keep that right there, right there, right there, then it's like a rubber band. It'll always pull me back. It'll keep me in place. And that's all we need. And to that we say, 
Amen, 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 e punto. And so it is. Thank you, everyone. We love you so much. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.